Hey there saplings, my name is Danny, and welcome to Esoteric Moment. Today I've got another book review. I'm really excited about this one. It is much more fun and easygoing than some of the books I've featured on this channel. If you would like more book reviews or information about Druidry or my farm, definitely subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And like this video if you have ever read a cookbook. Okay, so this week's book review is Celtic Folklore Cooking. This is by Joanne Sala, and it is a hefty cookbook, as cookbooks are, but what I really love about this cookbook is it's not just recipes. There are myths and poems and features about little Irish folklore or traditions that all have to do with the recipes and it makes for a really fun read. You're not just like figuring out what you want to make, going to that page and closing the book. You really need to linger and like enjoy this book. So if you're looking for a way of featuring more fun and just like joy, practical items and ways of celebrating your pagan roots druidry practice, this cookbook might be a great place to start. Okay, so what's featured in this cookbook? There are recipes for the following topics, uh, beverages, bread, porridge, and breakfast foods, milk, eggs, and cheese, soups and stews, vegetables, fish, and seaweed. I didn't know there were so many seaweed recipes, frankly. That was really interesting. There's a meat and wild game section, and of course, desserts. Many of these sections had recipes I hadn't heard of, and some of them featured recipes that I thought were kind of just my own family quirks and, and traditions that apparently other people <laughs> enjoy as well. So that was fun. Like there's some really great instructions on how to do candied flowers, which my family always does. Some good information on like herbal butters and, and herbed honey, things like that, that you might not typically find in your just standard fare cookbook. Many of the recipes are used today and the author has formatted in today's typical recipe format, so ingredients bolded and instructions on the bottom. She's also included some recipes that are from historical sources, and those she's left just as the original author and source wrote it, so it might take a little bit of deciphering, but it's really fun to see a different way of cooking and interpretation of recipe. And of course, the stories, poems, myth, those are all really fun. Some are features of the typical like Irish uh, cycles of myth that you might see. Others are just kind of folklore stories about fairies or you know the local neighbor kind of thing. And then of course there's information about the ingredients or medicinal or fairy associations with those plants or ingredients at the beginning of the recipe. I would say I wish the dessert section featured a little more chocolate. I think that's what my dessert sections of cookbooks require. But generally the recipes were really easy to understand. I've tried a few. Some were ones that my family already used traditionally. And if you're looking for a way of kind of doing something easy and fun but still rooted in a pagan practice, I think Celtic folklore cooking is probably a great place to start. Sometimes the books we read about paganism, you know, we really get stuck in the meat of theology and deep thinking and oh, shadow work and all of that stuff, which is great. But let's not forget that we are living people and our practice should reflect that we are, you know, alive and doing fun things, mundane things, and let's Let's bring some of that joy and, and lightness into our practice as well. In the comments below, I'd love to hear if there's a particular recipe that you associate with a pagan holiday. Maybe it's a midwinter dessert or a special bread you make on Lamas. Let me know the details. I am always looking for new recipes. This week, I would love to shout out um, Microtuber. He wrote a really interesting question on my Path of Druidry book review, and that was, if someone were interested in exploring Druidry but only wanted to read one of these three books, Living Druidry by Orr, Druidry Handbook by Greer, or Path of Druidry by Penny Billington, which would I choose? Great question. 
a hard question, right? And I said that I would probably vote for Penny Billington's book mostly because it really aligns to my own interpretation of Druidry, whereas Orr's Living Druidry is perhaps less meaty and gives you less to get started as a beginner. And Greer's Druidry Handbook is really awesome, but is more aligned to a different kind of interpretation of Druidry than I myself find I'm attracted to, but all are excellent choices. Hi Microtuber and thank you for such an awesome and thought-provoking comment. Thanks for watching and as always may you find peace in the sacred grove.